Well, welcome back to RDWorks Learning Lab. Um, very quickly on the heels of our previous session um, about Christmas card, I've discovered that I'm still an idiot and I don't understand exactly how to control paths. Here we have some personalised inner pieces for the Christmas card that are done in thin paper. Now, as you can see on the screen, we've got four patterns. Um, I've done this to make sure that I maximise the use of um, an A4 sheet of paper that I'm going to be using. I don't really want to cut a message and then an outside shape, a message then an outside shape. What I ideally want to do is cut all the messages, all the slots, and then finally cut the four outside shapes so that the whole sheet of paper remains strong until the very last minute. So using what we discovered in the last session, um, we go to Cut Optimize and take a look how it's set. Well, we found that this appeared to be an ideal setting when I was doing one of these. But now I'm not doing one, I'm doing four of them and I need to control the cuts differently. We'll go and have a look at how the cuts are arranged. And what we'll find, if we click on this outside shape here and hunt for it down the list, it's number 710. Well, we can push that one across to there. Then we can go and look for this one. 1189, and we'll push that one across. Then we'll hunt for this one. We found that's 387. And then finally this one. And hey presto, it's the very last element. So we send that across. Now I'm at the bottom of the list, I'm going to mark the bottom one, I'm going to hold the shift key down, and we're going to run right to the top of the list, and we're going to click again. So we've marked everything, and we're going to send that across now onto the bottom of this list. So what I've arrived at is a list here, where what it looks as though I've got is the last cuts first. Not what I want, but what it's a very convenient way of producing this list, because what we can then do is go up there and say reverse and reorder. And now we shall find, right at the bottom of this list, our four elements that are the last ones. So click, 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 click. There they are, sitting at the bottom of the list. Let's say OK. And let's go and have a look to see what the preview does. We'll just wind the sp oh, the speed is right speed is right up. <clears throat> so all good so far. For some reason it's decided to cut the E. Now it's cutting the outside. Well I don't want that. That isn't what I asked for. OK, so let's have a quick look at our list again and see whether our list is still intact. We did have that one, that one, that one, and that one last in the list. So nothing has interfered with our list. Somewhere along the way, the machine is doing something other than what we've requested. So I spent quite some time trying to figure out why, and then I spotted the problem. Look down here. Can you see what it says down there? Path Optimize. There's a tick down there, which is by default on, and I had never noticed that before. So let's just close this and let's take this tick off. So let's run our preview again and see what happens this time. Now the interesting question there is why Sue has been done first? And I think it's because I haven't integrated Sue into the outside. But if we look carefully, we shall see that the outsides are being done last. And at last, the machine is actually doing what I requested. 
Well, I did warn you that I'm no expert. I'm not tutoring you. You are watching me learning. And uh, you've certainly seen me discover something there which is very important. So let's take a quick look at a problem that the preview did highlight. And that was this Sue here. Now if you look, the Sue is sitting on the outside shape. It's completely independent. If we take a look at the Sue that I've done beside it, you'll see how I've merged the outside shape into the letters so that it becomes one continuous path. That's the way that it's got to be done. So I've got to go back to my CAD file now and I've got to modify my CAD file because there's no chance of me doing any modifications here. Well here we are back again with our modified version of Sue and because we've re-imported this it means that all the listing data that we had before has been thrown away and wasted. Okay so there's our four outside shapes. Now previously I'd shown you how we can mark the top and the bottom and drag the list across but there is a simpler way of doing it so I've subsequently found out and that is now that this list is empty of the key features that we want we can just chuck the rest across by pressing these three arrows so it's as simple as that but now we need to remember to reverse the list because we've got our outside shapes at the top of the list and we want them at the bottom of the list where now we'll just go down and check one two three, four, there they are, OK. We'll just check to make sure that the path optimise has not automatically switched itself back on, which it doesn't appear to have done. So everything is under control. So we'll just test this with the preview. Oh dear, it's doing something silly. It's doing the ping pong game again. So we still have a little problem of some sort, so let's mark here it again. And we'll go up here to handle and we should see how we've got the cut optimize set. Auto determine start point and direction, left to right. I don't think that makes any difference, but we'll start up to bottom. Order of layer which presumably is the order of my list. So let's give that a try and let's see how that influences things. Ah, the first thing it's done is the worst possible thing. So making that little selection there has presumably destroyed my list again. So as you can see there's serious interactivity between these two features, the cut optimize and this list. So it probably means I've got to go back and reset this list again now. Okay, so we've reordered the list. Let's try a preview again. And hopefully this is the last four cuts by the look of it. At the moment I've achieved what I wanted to and I think I'm getting some sort of mastery of this um, path control at last. Because I'm doing lots of these personalised um, card inserts I have to keep reprogramming every time I get a new set in. And what I'm finding is very quickly by experience that the first thing that you have to do is put your marquee around it and go up here to the handle. And you have to do this customize, um, cut optimize first. Now it doesn't matter which which one you use. It would appear. I mean, I'll tick start point. We we'll go inside to out, up to bottom. It really doesn't matter. So, but we have to do this cut optimize window first. So once we've done the cut optimi cut optimize window, however we set it we can then go into the um, the list and here we can then go through and choose um, the last four cuts that we want. Before we do the preview it's a good idea to set your speeds and feeds correctly so I'm going to be using 65 millimeters a second 
and I'm going to be using 15% power put that down to 15 as well right now we can do a preview and that works perfectly the really important lesson here that I've had today is that I've got to do the cut optimize before I do the ordering the the cuts okay now this is uh, quite a complex pattern that I'm trying to develop here and the paper itself is going to be like this 80 grams and it's going to be very thin and flexible so I need to support it in as many places as possible but I obviously don't want any pins in the way of any of the engraving or cutting so the great advantage of my pin table here is it's fully flexible and here I've got uh, if you like a template of what the table is and I've found the best position to set my pins well there's my pin plate set up now bear in mind I've got a steel plate underneath here I can reference a steel plate off the back edge of the table there and assume that the back edge of the table is more or less square with the uh, with the x-axis and that means that then this edge here which is the y-axis I can true this um, my table up here my flexible pin table by referencing up to the edge of my metal plate so I'm fairly confident that my table is basically true X and Y to the axis of the machine so the only thing I've got to do now is to move this apart by approximately 10 mil or 11 mil the important thing is to make sure that the machine origin sits in here somewhere so that when it carries out its path it doesn't pass over any of these pins that's about right so we'll set the origin there run another track along the top there so I think that's probably about as good as we're going to be able to get it it's just on the top of that pin there I'm putting a little piece of double-sided tape and I'll put a piece on the opposite corner just so that the paper doesn't move once I've put it in place and it's not going to move that much now run around all the text and put the slots in and then finally drop the shapes out because that way the paper holds it all nice and tight together there we go you watch because I've got my pin table sort of set out there now the pieces don't actually fall out, they sit nice and stable and so uh, here's the end result personalised Christmas cards